What's good team? Welcome to another Small James Coding tutorial where today we're going to be learning quick the fastest JavaScript web framework on the planet O of 1 loading time and we're going to be learning it by building a CRUD application called Affirmations using Tailwind CSS. This tutorial is an absolute banger because we learn all of the things like state management, responsive web design, all of the important concepts that you need to know in Quick to start developing amazing applications with it today. It's a brilliant framework. I really enjoy coding in it. The application itself is pretty straightforward. It demonstrates all the essential CRUD functionalities. We have some affirmations that display on our page after we've entered them. We can go ahead and add a new affirmation, which is eat five fruit and veg per day, your local GP. We can save that affirmation and now that is going to loop over just here. So we learn how to make modals, everything, add new elements. We look at having global state using context and a whole lot more good stuff. Brilliant tutorial, the only one you need if you want to become a quick pro today. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's super appreciated. And without further ado, let's get into the development. So to dive in, we're going to start off in our terminal in the directory of our choosing. So here I'm in my GitHub and we're going to come over to the quick documentation, which we linked in the description down below and type npm create quick at latest hit enter that's going to ask us to create a new project or potentially install a quick if you have to install just follow through with that we're going to name our project quick affirmations because that is the kind of application we're making it's going to be a basic app so we're going to say yes we do want to install the dependencies you may or may not want to get repository i'm not going to worry about it and now we can see Quick has gone ahead and installed all the dependencies. And now we can just follow these steps here. So if we just CD into a Quick Affirmations, and now I can type code dot and we can bring that up inside of our Visual Studio Code Editor. And in here we can boot this up by opening up a terminal inside of our Visual Studio Code Editor. And we can just run npm run develop. And that's going to start our project up on localhost 5173. So we can just paste that in there. And here we have our uh, boilerplate code. Now the boilerplate quick code is actually super cool. It is a neat little display. It actually, you know, has demonstrations of just about everything you could want. So here we have a to-do app and here we have a flower app. So lots of state management, you know, we can try everything. So if you ever get stuck, it's, you know, likely that you'll find what you're looking for, examples of what you're looking for inside of the code that comes with the boilerplate code. Equally, they have brilliant documentation, so you can just totally check that out. If we come into the documentation just here, they have pretty much everything you need to dive in. If we come over to our code, let's take a look at what we have here. We have our package.json, which is just the node package manager. We have some vite config files, some TypeScript configuration, ESLint, git ignore, all that good stuff. We have a public directory with some, you know, local assets that get served with the project, including some fonts. And we have our source directory, and this is where all the magic happens. We have two notable folders. We have the components folder and the routes folder. We'll get into those later. And then here we have a bunch of files that we actually don't really need to worry about. We have a bunch of entry.typescript files. They aren't really relevant to what we're going to be doing. So we can just leave them be. And then we have the root.typescript file, which is, you know, the basic entry point of our application. So here we can see the body tag. And inside of here is where our index.typescript gets rendered from in our route folder. Now this routes folder is important because this is essentially how we create a multi-page application in Quick. Here we can see that we have the demo folder so if i wanted to come to one of the demos that they have just down here we can see that that is hosted at demo slash flower and so we can see that this folder based directory matches that route just up there 
the index.typescript is the file that gets rendered within that. So here we have an index.typescript that gets rendered within Flower. And so if we came into here, we would expect to see all the code that is responsible for generating these flowers, which is exactly what we have. So that's how we can go about making new routes. The ones that we are going to be focusing on today is this index.typescript and this layout.typescript. The layout.typescript is a reserved file because this is one that is going to wrap our entire application. So essentially how it works is we have all of this logic inside of our index.typescript at our home level route or our root level route. That gets rendered as a child or slot element within the layout. In the layout, we also have our header and footer. And then all of this gets rendered within the body of our document just here inside of the root. Anyway, we can go ahead and close this. Now, the next thing we're going to do is actually just kill this for a second. And we are going to come back into the documentation and install Tailwind. Quick actually makes it incredibly easy for us to do this. All we have to do is run an npm run quick add Tailwind. If we hit enter on that, that is going to do a whole lot of configuration. It's going to, at the very end of that config, ask us if we're ready to apply the Tailwind updates to our app. We sure are. We'll say, looks good. It's going to update our application and install all the dependencies. And now if we come into our global CSS file, we can see that the Tailwind uh, styles have been added to our global CSS. And that also allows us to come through and delete just about everything in here. So we're going to get rid of all of this stuff inside of our global CSS. We can leave some basic stuff regarding the uh, body and the HTML, so that's fine. And the other file that we have just in here is the styles.css inside of our root level route. We can go ahead and delete that file and that's going to make our application pretty angry, but if we restart it, we can come through and clear that in good time. So coming back into our app, we see that we no longer have the uh, styles.css to import into our applications. So we'll want to come into our layout just here and remove these style lines because we're going to be using Tailwind for everything. We can get rid of use styles just up the top. We can keep the uh, header footer stuff for now. We can also go ahead and delete everything with inside the demo folder because we're not going to be needing that. We can come home to our home route just here. And all of this code is what we're seeing inside of this root level component just here. So we can select everything and we can gut the entire project. We'll keep this document head just down here render out an empty div, delete all these components, and we can also come in here. We're going to want to leave the route ahead component. This is some important stuff about the uh, meta information of the document. However, we can go ahead and delete everything inside of the starter project, which is going to include these header and footer components. So now we should have a totally blank application. Once again, you don't have to immediately delete everything. It can be good to look at if you, you know, want to see some demonstrations of how quick applications are put together. And the first thing we are going to do in our application is actually create some components inside of this components file just here. So the first one I'm going to create is a modal. So we're going to create a folder called modal and inside of here, we're going to return an index.typescript file, so TSX. And we are just going to come into our index, copy this entire page and return that in there minus this head section. And this is essentially what a blank modal component looks like. So this is going to be the modal that we use to enter our affirmations in. After that, we can come into the index file that we have just here and we can go ahead and start initializing some of the state that we're going to have in our document. And so the state that we're going to need in here is, you know, this is the home route where we're going to render out all of our affirmations and we're going to keep track of them with an index. So we're going to start off by saying const display index. This is going to be the index that we display on the screen. And that is going to be equal to, and now if you're familiar with React, this won't be too abstract for you, but because it's a stateful variable that we're about to initialize, 
and it's a simple one at that. It's just an index. We're going to go with a use signal. So we'll have to import that up the top of our document. And then we can just provide a default value for that stateful variable. The other thing we're going to do in this component just here inside of this index file is we're going to change the title of our document to affirmations, just like that. And we're going to say, uh, provide some meta information. So, you know, this is a feel good app that reminds you of all the positive things people have to say about you, exclamation mark. So that's pretty cute. Now we're going to come into our layout.typescript file. We can get rid of this uh, top thing just here. So we'll delete that. We'll also get rid of this. And what we're going to need to do in this component is start off by uh, initializing our context. So we can define a context or essentially a global state inside of quick by typing export const my context is equal to create context ID. And we're going to give it an ID, which is just a string, whatever you want it to be. In this case, I'm going to call it uh, quick affirmations. So that's just going to be the ID for our context. Now inside of the component, the next thing we're going to do is create a state. So we're going to say const state is equal to. Now before we saw that we used use signal, but that was just to initialize a very, you know, basic state, whereas this is going to be more comprehensive and, you know, a larger object with a larger object with more keys and values. So in this instance, we're instead going to use a use store, which functions, you know, more like a store that you might be familiar with, for example, in SvelteKit or React. And this use store is going to take an object as an argument. And in here, what we're going to do is define our affirmations and that's going to be an array of affirmations and after that we're going to have a second key which is just open modal and that is going to be false and that is going to hold the boolean value that you know displays or does not display our enter affirmation modal so now that we have the state defined we can actually finish configuring the uh, global state for our application or the context and we can say use context provider and we can pass in the uh, identification for our context in addition to the state that we want to use for it and just like that we have defined a global state that can be accessed anywhere inside of our application so with that part done the next thing we can start doing is actually creating some jsx we're going to start up just here and have some conditionally rendered or a conditionally rendered component it's just going to be our modal or our intermodal. And this is going to check if state.openModal is true. And if it is, it's going to render out modal. And so we can just import modal from our components file and render it as, you know, a React component or, you know, the same as an HTML component. We capitalize the first letter. And so this line is essentially just some JSX that says, if this is true, then we want to render out our modal. So that's pretty straightforward. Underneath that, we're going to have a header element. This is going to contain an icon, which we're going to configure later. So for now, I'm just going to say icon. And then down the bottom of the page, if you, you know, decided to, you could have a footer. That's all pretty straightforward. And so that's all the basic stuff done in here for the second. The next component we're going to come into is the root. And we are just going to define our first tailwind style. We're just going to give the body of our document a min height of the screen, a background of slate 900 and a text of white. So that's going to make everything a dark theme. We're also going to give it a display of flex and a flex direction of flex coal. And now we can come back into this layout and we can give this a class equal to flex one flex and flex col. And that just means that our header is going to sit at the top of our page. Our main is going to occupy as much of the page as possible and our footer will be pushed to the bottom. While we're in here, we're also just going to give this a max width of maybe 1200 pixels. So we use the square brackets to, you know, have custom, uh, custom values. We're going to give it a margin X of auto and a width of full so that it occupies the full width of the page until we reach that maximum width uh, 
boundary. So now for the next part, we're going to come into Font Awesome CDN. And if we just type this into Google, we can come into the CDN library just here and copy this very first tag. The links to these websites will be in the description down below of this video. And we can import the links for our project into the router head component that we have defined up here. So you can see that we already have some link tags, so we can just go ahead and copy that in. We'll have to update the cross origin so that it is camel case. And now that's going to allow us to come over to a font awesome icons and we can select an icon. We can come into the plus cause that's what we'll be needing. If we hit enter and just make sure we select a free one, we can copy this uh, HTML tag or this HTML just here. And we can go ahead and paste it into the head of our document right there. And if we come back over to our page, we can indeed see that there is a little plus. So that is nice and easy. I might also come into the root of our document just here and on this body tag, give the entire document a padding of four, just so that everything sits inwards. So with that all done, we can actually start entering some logic into our application now. So we can add some CRUD functionality. And the first thing that this is going to begin with is creating this or, you know, displaying this modal just here so that we can actually enter a to do. So we can just quickly give this little icon here a cursor of pointer because it's going to be a little button that we click and we can go ahead and add an on click handler. You'll have to have the dollar sign just here. This is one of the tricks that allows quick to be so incredibly fast and we can pass in a an arrow function or an anonymous function just here and we can directly mutate this state so we can just say state dot open modal is equal to not state dot open modal so now what we would expect to see is if i just open our modal component real quick here it is let's say modal so we can see when it's actually there Currently that does not display on our page. However, when I click this, I would expect it to show up. We click there, it does indeed. I click this again, it, you know, inverses the Boolean value and displays and hides it. So that is super handy dandy. We'll also just have to come back into our root once more and add one more style, give the body a position of relative because our modal is going to be uh, absolute. So we'll just set the bare minimum styles. We'll give this a class of fixed top zero left zero with screen height screen so now when i click the plus we would expect the modal to show and the plus to be hidden and it will in fact be hidden if i give this a background of slate 900 if we do that again we can see that uh, a modal does appear and hides the plus so that's super handy dandy inside of this component we are going to define two types of state now you could use one solution or the other i'm just going to use both for the sake of demonstrating how they work the first one is going to be const state is equal to use store just as we did before we'll pass in an object and then here we're going to have the affirmation that's just going to be an empty string and then we're going to have const author is equal to use signal and we're just going to pass in an empty string as a default value right there. So that's pretty easy. The other thing we're going to do is access the data, which is going to be from our context. So that is our global state. And in here we can just say use context just like that. So we'll have to import that up the top of our component. And in here we're going to pass in my context, which will need to be imported from our layout. So here we defined export const my context, which is the context identification. And we just pass that in as an argument and that is going to allow us to access our global context inside of this data variable right there. Super duper easy. Now inside of our actual uh, JSX, we can start off by adding a paragraph tag that says add an affirmation. Uh, after that, and actually to make sure that this displays, we could just temporarily set this to true. That way the modal is always displayed. So after this, we can have an input 
this is going to have a placeholder value of enter affirmation. Uh, easy peasy, we'll make sure we close that. So there's our input. Now what we're going to do is we are going to say on input, we're going to take the event and we are going to say state.affirmation is equal to e.target.value. Now this is one way, you know, we can see that that will uh, actually work in a second if I just change the color, but we can see there is in fact text there. This is one way we can bind the value of a of an input to a stateful variable. We're going to have a second uh, input to demonstrate how we do it with the use signal value. So in here we're going to have a new input and we're just going to bind the value equal to author just like that and we can have a placeholder that just says author close that and now we have our second input and so we can see that you know this is relatively uh, simpler than using the use store but you know you can do it either way as you please depends how you want to manage your state after that we're going to have a button that says save and then we're going to have a horizontal line and then underneath that, we're going to render out a bunch of our other to-dos inside of a div. We'll give this a class of equal to flex, flex col gap one. And in here we can map out a whole bunch of elements just like we do in React by saying data.affirmations.map. We're going to take the affirmation we're going to take the aff index and in here we're going to return a div the divs have to have a unique key that's why we take the index so that's going to be the index and in here if we just go ahead and close that div we could rent out the affirmation dot or i guess just the zeroth element because uh, i'm going to save them as arrays currently we have none so none will show up but this will work later so with that done, we can actually start adding some inputs. So in here, what we're going to do is define an onClick event for this uh, save button. Now, the first thing we're going to do in here is say if, and we're going to check if author.value exists and the uh, state.affirmation. If both of these parameters exist, then we're going to you know, execute our logic, otherwise nothing is going to happen. And equally, what we could do is actually enter this as a guard clause. So we can change this into an or statement and just put not of each. And if neither exists, we can very simply return out of this function. And if we get past this little if clause, then we know that they do exist. And so we can go ahead and update our state. So the first thing we're going to do in here is directly target our context and the affirmations. And we're going to say it is equal to, uh, we'll add an array, we'll spread the current affirmations and we'll add a new one. So that's going to be an array where the zeroth index is going to be our state.affirmation and the second index is going to be our author.value. So this should go ahead and add an affirmation for us. We're also going to go ahead and set data.openModal equal to uh, false. So we'll close our modal. And so in here I can say James author is cool. If we hit save, we close the modal and now we should actually have a, an affirmation available to render on this page. So now that we have the ability to add affirmations, it's time we come back into our index file uh, and we can start rendering them out on our screen. So that is actually going to require us changing our divs to React Fragments for a second. And in here what we're going to do is we're going to have some conditional logic and we're going to say data dot, well actually before we even do that, we'll have to access our context so we're going to say const data is equal to use context. Make sure that gets imported at the top and pass in my context, which will also need to be imported. And now we can go ahead and come into our JSX. We can have some conditional rendering. So we're just going to say data.affirmations.length. 
if it's greater than zero, we're going to return some stuff. Otherwise, we're going to return some other stuff. So if we do, in fact, have uh, some affirmations available, we're going to return some more fragments just here. And I'm going to have an h1 tag that is the uh, data dot affirmations at our display index and we have to access the value of that display index and then we're going to hit the zeroth element so that's going to be the actual quote and then underneath that we're going to have a paragraph tag uh, that is italicized and in here we're going to access data dot affirmations display index dot value and we're going to access the one, which is going to be the actual uh, value. Now, if we don't have any affirmations, which is going to be the second case here, we're going to once again return some fragments. And in here, we're going to have a paragraph uh, tag that says, welcome to affirmations. Uh, and then we're going to have a, another paragraph that has uh, add your first or actually we can just say add an affirmation. Uh, now this paragraph is going to have an on click event. Uh, this is going to be a function. We're just going to access data dot open modal and set that equal to true. And I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this in uh, brackets just like that. So now we can refresh this page. We can come back into our layout and set our modal default to false. And so here we have welcome to affirmations. We can add an affirmation, click on that, and that's going to allow us to add our first affirmation. Now, if I just quickly add one and we hit save, we can see that that does in fact display on our page. So that is all working. And if I add another one, that's going to add, however, we can't see it because we're not actually going to rotate over all of them. So that's probably a good thing to do next. So we're going to stay inside of our index.typescript at our home route just here. And we're going to create something that's a bit analogous to a use effect. This is going to be a function or a callback function that runs every you know X amount of time. So we're going to say use visible task. We'll have to import that from, you know, in our top import statement just here. And this is going to uh, take some arguments. So we're going to destructure clean up. Let's just so sort of clean up out of uh, the argument. Then we're going to open that up as an arrow function. Easy peasy, just like that. And inside of here, let's actually spell clean up correctly. And inside of here, we're going to say const interval is equal to set interval. Uh, and this is going to take a function. In here, we're going to say if display index dot value is less than data dot affirmations dot length minus one, then we're going to increment that value. So we're just going to say display index dot value plus plus. And otherwise, what we're going to do is, you know, we've reached the final affirmation index. We're going to set it back to zero and we can start the loop again. So that's just going to be display index.value is equal to zero. And the second argument we're going to pass into the uh, interval is, you know, the number of milliseconds that we want to have before we rotate. So that's going to be 30,000. And then underneath that, we're going to call cleanup. And that is going to take another arrow function that just says, clear interval and we'll just pass in the interval just like that nice and easy so that should rotate through all of our affirmations if we go ahead and just say one two three four five six add that nothing's going to happen but now if i add a second one that's a b c d e f and save that, we would expect after 30 seconds for this to rotate onto the second affirmation and then back onto the first one. And it's just going to, you know, scroll through all of them in due time. And so we can see that did in fact change. And so everything is working perfectly. And so with that all done, we can now go ahead and actually style everything on our page. 
So we're going to start off inside of our, let's start off with the modal. So let's go into our layout and click quickly set this to true once again so our modal displays. And we can come into our modal component just here and we can say class is equal to text, maybe extra large, font semi bold. Uh, let's just set this to a mobile display for the second. So that's going to be a mobile display. We'll make sure the whole thing is responsive. Uh, so we have that. We're going to say text center. Somewhere we seem to have lost our padding, which is not so hot flash. So let's make sure that that is still, oh no, that's because our modal is rendered absolute. So we're gonna to have to give our modal some padding. So we'll say P4. We're also going to give it a display of flex and flex column, and maybe give it a gap of two. So here we have add an affirmation. We could possibly make this a two XL, maybe even a three. No, I think two is good. And we could actually just go ahead and just make this completely bold. No, I like semi-bold. Semi so that's it for our affirmation. Now for our inputs, we're going to style them both together. So we're going to say class is equal to uh, background transparent. We're going to say outline none focus outline none. So that's going to mean that we have no uh, focus amount just there. The text is the correct color, so that's all good. We're going to say text small, unless we're on a small screen, in which case text will be base. We're going to give it a padding of uh, two. We're going to say rounded border, border, maybe uh, sky 300, focus border sky 400, duration of 200, just like that. So now we have our two little affirmations, which looks nice and tidy. As for our button, we can go ahead and give this some style. So this is going to have a class of background sky 400, text slate 900, padding x of 4, padding y of 2, rounded, and uh, a margin x of auto. So that way it's in the center. And I might actually make that ml auto so that it always sits to the uh, side just there and I might also just uh, set the text color back to white but make it font semi bold and say text small maybe we don't even need the font semi bold I might also just bring this down to a padding no I like the two the two is fine uh, so that's all good. We're also going to give it a duration of 200 and a hover background sky fire 600. So that way when we hover over it, it just gets a little bit darker. We can see that just there. I might also just change these borders so that they are 400. And when we focus, it can be maybe 800. So it's kind of just like that. Although it honestly should probably be the inverse, I think. So we'll say this one is 800, and then when we focus, it becomes the uh, 400. So they're both dark, and then we focus just like that. Easy peasy. So now the horizontal line is all good, except I'm going to change this to a div, and that's going to have a class equal to height, custom height of one pixel, and a background of uh, sky 300 and an opacity of 50 so that should be just like that and I'm going to give it an MX of auto and a width of two-thirds and that's actually a lie I'm just going to keep it that way and under here we should be able to see the rest of our affirmations so let's just try adding one there and there we hit save and now that one does in fact show up so that is all good uh, and we can give this a class equal to uh, flex, flex col. We don't need to give it a gap. And we might just give it a background of uh, BG slate 800. We'll give it a rounded, a padding of two. 
So now if I just go ahead and add one again, let's see what that looks like. So there is our affirmation. We could possibly try making this like a blue. Let's see what that looks like. Add an affirmation. Oh, that looks pretty terrible. I wonder what Sky 900 looks like. So I think we're just going to slick, stick with having them as uh, Slate 900. Uh, no, sorry, Slate. Maybe Slate 700. Let's try one more. Yeah, so that is going to be... Uh, honestly, we could just make it black. Slate black. And I'm also just going to say text is uh, small. So now when we add the affirmation, save that, add the new affirmation, we have it down there. I might also just... Uh, wrap this inside of a paragraph tag just here so that is going to be the actual affirmation and then underneath that we're going to have a paragraph and this one is going to have class equal to text extra small and also we're going to say text slate 300 so that it's slightly darker and that is going to be affirmation one so now if we go ahead and add one we can see that it shows up just there. And I might also put a little dash in front of it. And we could also just go ahead and, as we do on the main page, italicize uh, this affirmation. And the other thing I'm going to do is actually change something here. So I'm going to create a secondary div give this a class equal to flex and flex column uh, so we can have that just here this is going to wrap our two paragraph tags and i'm going to change this one to be flex and give it a gap of two everything else is going to stay the same except here we're going to have a secondary div that allows us to delete an affirmation so that is just going to be an icon we'll also just say uh, items center will give this one a flex of one so that it occupies a majority of the width and now if we come over to our icons just here we can select a minus we can take this minus copy that uh, HTML tag paste it in there and now we sh would expect that to uh, show up on our page so we can add an affirmation, come and find it, and we can see that minus is right there. So that is breezy. Now this is going to have to have an on-click uh, event that is going to remove uh, the affirmation that we have. So that's pretty easy. We're just going to open that up and we're going to say data.affirmations is equal to uh, data.affirmations except we're going to say dot filter. We're going to target each element and the element index, and we're going to return uh, element index is not equal to f index. So as long as the elements do not have the same index as the one that we're deleting, they get saved. Otherwise we delete our affirmation. So that is going to be easy breezy. So we might just quickly want to style this. We'll give this a cursor of pointer. And maybe we could say hover scale 125 and we can give it a duration of 200. So that should be pretty easy. If we just add one right here, we can see that that scales. And if I click it, it will remove it. So that is, you know, awesome. Now, if we come into our home page right here, we can go ahead and start styling these elements. And that's actually going to need us to come back into this main section right here. And we're just going to add a justify center and items center. And what that's going to do is uh, center our affirmations. So if we come into our layout and set this to a default of false, here we have our text right here. I might just add a gap of two uh, so that's pretty breezy in here we're going to start off by styling this text just here 
So I'm going to give this one a class of text 3XL, maybe even 4XL to be honest, and I'm going to say font semi bold, so it's nice and big, and we're going to say text is uh, centered. And then underneath this one, we're going to give this little paragraph tag a class equal to uh, px4py2 rounded border border white uh, actually yeah we'll say border white border solid background sorry bg white text slate 900 uh, and we'll say on hover we'll set the uh, background bg slate 300 uh, and we'll say a cursor pointer and give it a duration of 200 milliseconds uh, and that is unhappy because I added that inside of our actual function so we'll just add that at the very start right there now we have our little add an affirmation button I might also just give this a uh, margin top of 10 uh, could possibly smaller maybe 5 so that's pretty easy we can add an affirmation add it in right here now that's in the middle of the page so we can go ahead and style these ones this is going to be class of text uh, 3xl font semi bold uh, and we're also just going to wrap the actual affirmation inside of quotations so it should be pretty nice and then for this secondary paragraph we're just going to give it a class equal to uh, text slate 300 uh, text small so let's see how that looks we add an affirmation uh, you are an amazing developer and you should never give up on your dreams and that is by James uh, McCool. Now if we save that, that shows up in the middle of our page by James McCool. I'm also just going to add that right there and we are going to text center the two of them. So that is easy breezy. Let's just do that again. You can achieve your wildest dreams exclamation mark by bob the builder we'll save that now we have our little affirmation in the middle of the screen we can add another one cool bananas uh, by me we can see that we have our little affirmation showing up right there we'll save that and now we can see that it actually swapped to the second one after 30 seconds the other thing we're just going to do in the modal real quick is we're going to, uh, on this div right here, just say overflow scroll in case any of our elements overflow the page. And now the last thing we're going to do is actually save some of this stuff to local state. Now the way that we're going to do that is by coming into our layout again and in here we're going to use a use visible task as we did before so kind of like the use effect the use visible task only renders on the client side as opposed to the use task which will be both server side and client side and in here we're going to say if local storage dot get item and in this one we're going to say quick affirmations if that exists, then we're going to say state.affirmations is equal to uh, json.pass local storage.getItem, and it's going to be a quick affirmations, just like that. So that should be pretty straightforward. We're also just going to want to access the affirmations key. So that doesn't do anything now because we don't have any. And the other thing we're going to do is inside of our modal, when we actually write them in here, we're just going to say local storage dot set item. And in here, it's going to be the key that we save it to local storage. So that's going to be quick affirmations. And in here, we're going to say JSON dot stringify. We're going to have an object. This is going to be affirmations. And that is just going to be 
data.affirmations. We will have updated them right here. So that will be the latest affirmations. And if we go ahead and save that, now we should be able to add an affirmation and say, you can totally teach yourself quick today. This is by Small James. That's me inspiring you. We can save that. Our beautiful quote comes up in the middle of our page. We can add another one. And that says, make sure to eat five fruit and veg per day. Smiley face, this is your local GP. Save that one too. Now every 30 seconds, that's gonna rotate between the two of them. And if I refresh the page, we get an uncaught error. And that says that undefined is not valid JSON. So that will be in here where we try to read them. And the explanation is simple. We have to pass the JSON before we do anything. And so now when we reload the page, everything is totally happy. And so just like that, we have a super cool CRUD app. It looks good. It's totally responsive and it teaches all the basic CRUD functionalities in addition to a whole lot of other tips and techniques that are useful to, for developing applications inside of Quick. We look at all of the analogous processes to use effect and use state in React, how we can input information into you know, text inputs, we can create modals and so much more. If you've enjoyed the tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's super appreciated and helps me make more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.